Hey guys, so in this week's episode, what I'm going to do is show you how to build a massive epic intro to your DJ set. You know when you go and see your favourite producers and your favourite DJs live? They don't just walk out and press play, they walk out to a huge intro to get the audience really riled up before they start playing. So in this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to make those. Let's do it. <laughs> So guys, before we get into it, I wanted to say a couple of things really quickly. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, subscribe for weekly videos. If you want to learn how to DJ, begin at DJLessons.com. If you want to learn how to produce your own music, begin at Ableton.com. And if you're not already, make sure you grab your phones now and follow me on Instagram for updates. And you guys can also ask me questions and stuff on Instagram. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing I want to do is play you guys the intro that I created. Instead of just playing it to you, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it over an actual live DJ set. And I'm going to play a bit of crowd noise as well. So you can really get the feel of what it would be like if I played my intro out live to an audience, okay? So this is my intro music, but it's to someone else's DJ set. And I've put crowd noises in as well to make it a little bit more realistic. So check it out. So guys, that's what we're going to be creating today, but you're probably wondering why I'm starting on DJ decks. The reason is, is because I'm giving away that intro I created so you guys can just download it and put it into your DJ sets. But I wanted to explain how you would use it in conjunction with music you're going to begin with. So obviously you're going to have a track that's gonna come in at the beginning. Usually it's quite good if you're gonna start with an intro like this to have something with a big drop, okay? So I'm gonna show you how you would take my massive intro and then build it into a song live on DJ Dex, okay? So we've got the intro here. On this side you can hear it playing. And over here I've got another track. It's called the D Gear Drop, okay? And uh, the drop of the sound, the song, sounds a bit like this. Okay, so this is what you want to do, okay? Bring the volumes all the way down because we're going to almost go on visuals to start. On the song you're going to bring in, you want to find the bit where it kind of breaks down. Like you're going you're gonna to hear the song go... Okay, so I can see if you look here on the screen around here, I can see it goes from a beat to like a, a different kind of color. I know that's probably going to be a wash. So if I come back to here like this and press play, let's have a listen. Perfect, so we found that wash. So I'm just going to go back, let me just pull the volume down, go back to the beginning of that wash. Now, at the end of my massive intro, you'll also hear a wash. Let me bring this up. Here we go. 
What you're going to do is go back to the beginning of that wash. And what I'm going to want you to do on whatever song you choose is count back eight bars. So a bar is, you can see there's numbers up here, they usually represent bars. So if you were to scroll back, that's one bar, and I'm going to do it on DJ Dex here. So one bar, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? And you, what you're going to do is just put a cue point here. And then you're going to take my track by the whoosh at the end, and you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to count back eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to about here, okay? And you're gonna put a point in. Next thing you're gonna do, I'm just gonna show you how these two are gonna fit together. So you're gonna have my intro full, the song that you're bringing in a little lower, and you're also gonna cut the, f the filter down slightly. And what you're gonna do is, just to start, I'm gonna press play at the same time, line them up to make sure they're perfect, I'm gonna filter in the song. So over those eight bars, I'm just gonna filter in the song and bring the volume up slightly. Okay, just so you can kind of hear how the two are gonna overlap. Let's just do that, okay? So you can see how they kind of blend in. You're kind of doing a bit of mixing on the spot. You're just blending in the song that you're bringing in. However, of course, if you wanted to do this live, all you have to do is keep your eye on this white marker here. And when it's coming up to that spot, and you see that red dot appear, get ready to line up the cue point of this track here. So I'm gonna do it from the start and just show you this from the, from just the whole thing all the way through, okay? So this is probably not something you would want to do if you're doing a wedding, but if you're doing a house party or you're doing something where you really wanted to hype up the crowd, you could definitely use this intro to build into any song you want using these principles and you'll have yourself a really epic intro, okay? Let me jump on Ableton and show you how I made this. Okay guys, so I'm gonna quickly show you how I made this intro in Ableton. So the first thing I did was I went through and I watched about three or four other big DJs intros and I basically tried to look at what they all had in common and I made notes, okay? So check out these notes I made. So I realized that they all were about one minute long. They were all the same speed as your first song. So obviously you can't have an intro that's going really quickly and then go into a really slow song. It has to be the same speed as your first song. The first song must have a huge drop. You can't build this huge epic intro that's all about building suspense and then drop a song that just doesn't have much of a drop. You've got to come into a really heavy drop. Um, and of course, the intro has to lead into the first song, okay? So they're the four things that I think you have to have. Now, 
Other than that, there's going to be a ton of different elements in your intro that you can use. And you can kind of play around these yourself by going to sites like Splice or other kind of um, sample sites like that. And you can look for these different samples and build your own incredible intros, okay? So they all had some sort of huge reverb horn. White noise. Um, they all had a recognisable counter, like a ticking, or a heartbeat, or a countdown, you know, a lot of people had like a countdown to a space shuttle taking off, that kind of stuff. Um, driving drums, like war drums, um, risers or air horns, those were very, very, they all had those kind of elements in them. And then additional things which I added, which I'm sure the others probably have as well, is small little risers here and there, like if you're building up to a big air horn or to a reverberated horn, you could use a small riser. Bass and sub drops, these kind of boom, those kind of sounds. And real world sounds like thunderstorms. So what you'll do is you'll go to things like Splice, you'll search for all these different elements here and gather all your favorite samples in something like Ableton, okay? Now, I'm just gonna jump onto Ableton and show you how I, the samples I ended up choosing and how I put them in place, okay? So, first thing I did was I set the tempo to 128 because the song that I'm going into is 128 and the song I'm going into has a huge drop. It sounds like this. <laughs> Cool. So, next thing I did was I checked down on this counter down here to a minute and I made a marker of a minute because I knew this is how long my intro had to be. I put the song at that bit where it goes At one minute I made sure that was on that mark so I was building up to that exact point there, okay? The next thing I wanted to do was make sure my intro had a big build at the last minute which is where I put my white noise and my risers. So I'm going to hide this song for now and I'm going to show you each element as I introduce it. So first things first, I had some white noise building up to this point. Okay, so I knew that was going to build tension. I had a riser as well, which sounds like that. Which I added to the white noise and it sounds like this. I also had some more white noise here because sometimes just layering white noise, they have different, slightly different sounds. For example, this one here has this sound. Whereas this one here has more like this kind of sound. They are slightly different, put them on top of each other, it kind of works quite nicely. And then I also added a tiny little sound at the end, which sounds like this. Okay, so I added that in as well, and then I made sure there was a huge kind of crash sound at the end, which also kind of went hand in hand with the of the song that we're going into. So the one I chose was this. Okay, so that'll lead nicely into the song. So, now I know that my intro is going to kind of build and drop along with whatever song I drop it into, okay? The next thing I wanted to add was these kind of huge horns that happen in so many intros. The one I picked was, all these sounds are pretty much from Kashmir's sample pack because it's just awesome. You can get it all on Splice. I'm not being sponsored by Splice, I just think it's awesome. Okay, so, it sounds like this. And I wanted it on every bar as well, so it sounds like this. Okay. Then I added this kind of crash or orchestral kind of crash because it added a bit more emphasis to it. Put that together with the horn, you get this. And I also wanted a huge bassy rumble. From being at these festivals, I know it's always a really bassy horn. Um, so it sounds like this. You're not going to hear this if you're on a phone. You have to have good headphones or good speakers. Okay, so I added that in with those other two sounds. A lot more emphasis. Then I realized there was a lot of silence between the horns, so I added this riser here, okay? So it sounds like this by itself. Okay. Now, the reason I added it is because if I take it away, listen to the silence between each horn. Now let me add it back in. See, 
Maria adds so much. The next sound that I've picked was this kind of ambient thunderstorm kind of sound. It sounds like this by itself. The reason I added it is because with these, I'm kind of building this war scene here, you know, big drums, this stuff like this, raining and thunder goes hand in hand with that so well. And watch what happens when I add it in. It just sounds like it just sounds right. Okay. The next thing I added was this uh, air horn. Air horn, alarm, siren, they're all the same kind of thing. This is the one I picked. It's like those kind of sounds were played in Britain when like the Germans were coming, you know, and, and everyone had to get in the house. They're kind of, it's a very scary noise and it works really well at building tension. And what I did was I actually built it over time. So if you go to here, transpose, I've transposed it up in volume here so it rises over time, listen. That obviously happens gradually though, but I just can't be bothered to sit there and listen to the whole thing going for ages and ages. So now listen to it with this horn, it completely changes it. It really sounds like there's a, a battle or a war going on. The next sound that I added in was a real life tension building sound, which would be like a heartbeat, gum, 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 or a ticking sound like tick, 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 or a countdown. I actually went for a ticking sound. The ticking sound I went for sounds like this. So I added that, a bar in, you could hear the ticking coming in. And then a bar after that, I added some cinematic drums. The cinematic drums, I wanted them to sound like they were coming from a distance and getting closer. So the way I did that was I added reverb to it and I automated the reverb to go away over time. So you can see this is the reverb and it's dry, wet, and it just goes away. So it sounds like they're coming closer. Have a listen. See it sound like it was in the distance and coming closer? So that's ticking and this cinematic sound. So again, this is what it sounds like. The only other thing you need to know about those drums was at the end I did make a little build out of them by just chopping it up and repeating the same sound. So it sounds like this at the end. And I filtered it up at the end so you can see this filters out some of the lows here. If you check this out, you'll see it filter up here. Okay, the next thing I wanted was a few more kind of epic crashes and drums. So I've got this sample here. And I added this sound in as well. So you put them both together, you get this. So if you add that to the cinematic drums and the ticking alone, you can hear these. Cool. And that's it, now this sound at the sound end is just the, um, the audience cheering. And that's all the sounds all put together. And obviously you've got to get all the, the volume levels right, but it's a really simple thing. You've just got to get those different, the different elements and put them together however you like. And the only other thing I was going to say as well is, you're probably going to want to, if you're building your own one of these, just build it into the first song you play and record it all as one. Even though I showed you at the beginning how you could take that intro and DJ it into any song, if you're building your own, then you might as well just build it straight in and export the whole thing. So all you've got to do, like I said, is make sure that song on the one minute mark goes into the <sighs> breakdown bit. And uh, in terms of filtering in, you know I told you about filtering in on the DJ decks. 
you can just grab an auto filter like this and filter it up over time like that so it'll come in nicely. So I'm going to finish this video by playing my entire intro all together. So before I go, I just want to say if you've liked this video, make sure you like it. Make sure you leave a comment and tell me what you think. I'm really interested in getting your guys' opinions on stuff. I'm going to make an effort to start writing back to your comments and stuff as well. Um, on that note, if you don't already, make sure you follow me on Instagram because a ton of you are writing to me on Instagram now and it's great just speaking to you guys. So make sure you get it, your phones out and follow Phil Harris Music on Instagram. Uh, if you don't know anything about DJing and you want to learn, beginnerdjlessons.com. If you're looking at this thinking it looks so complicated, I will completely demystify Ableton for you, break it all down and show you how to build your own dance music. It's absolutely awesome. I've got a three-part series at beginnerabletonlessons.com, so go and check that out there. Um, and that's pretty much it guys, so I'm going to wrap up the video there, I'll see you in a couple of days and I'm going to finish by just playing you this entire song from the beginning or the entire intro from the beginning. See you guys next week.